let me continue my analysis about this, uh, the fourth uh, economic cyclical crisis. When China started to absorb these uh, foreign machines and the facilities and the techniques to readjust the Russian style's heavy industry, they are first was successful to have a more better structure of the industries. Large amount of the textile industrial products, chemical fertilizer products, and uh, uh, petrol chemical products satisfied the social needs. So the agricultural products also increased. So since the beginning of the 1970s, and also combining the large amount of the labor invested into the infrastructure construction in agriculture. So one side is a modern factor to impact agricultural production. Another is a traditional one, use the labor invest. So the agricultural in increment in 1970s even more faster than 1960s. So there are at least three events. One is uh, since 1950 to 1960s, the collective system set up. They can easier or low cost to mobilize the surplus labor as a labor force to replace the zero capital to invest into the infrastructure construction in agriculture. That is the first event. Second. A large amount of investments from the collective to very much improve the agricultural situation and then to irrigate it, arable land increased doubled from less than 20% up to the less than 50%. So it means that every even think about this, uh, this irrigate, irrigated land, they can have a more than 70% added, added yield. Then Irrig not not uh, irrigated land, so it means also very big events for the agricultural uh, uh, growth. The third one is that the modern uh, 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 products that is a chemical fertilizer. So to use chemical fertilizer also can increase the annual yield twenty to thirty percent. So. The mid of 1970s, the green products even doubled than the 1950s, 1960s. So that is uh, to make the Chinese people from that time no worry, no worry about hunger. So these are uh, 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 projects to play a very important role to readjust the Chinese independent uh, uh, e economic structure. So he, that's one. It's the French made the, the uh, train, how to that? Electric, electric engine. engine. It's from France. And this one is from German. That, that's uh, uh, special for the, 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 the new machines. And uh, also, they have a, many. Uh, chemical textiles facilities. So, but the, the key point is that all of these uh, foreign facilities will paid by central budget. Because in 1970s, China still be the planning system. The planning system means that all of these uh, facilities, machines, techniques, need to be planned and then paid by the central budget, not by local. So from that time, the central budget got to take all of these uh, foreign investments uh, as foreign debts. And the budget means that the debts means the deficit inside of budget. Understand me? Foreign investments turn to the foreign debts. 
you need to pay back by the central budget. And then in central in the calculation of the central budget in the in the account, it's that it's deficit. Because you cannot exactly pay back immediately. When you have your products, you need to construction for half year at least, maybe one year. And then the returns need to be when you finish construction, you can produce the products, and then these products sell to the society, and then you can have a returns. And then these returns maybe one year or two years later you can have. So before that, you should, should calculate as a as a as a, as a debt. So the deficit. That's turned to deficit. So just uh, started from 1972, and then two years later or three years later, from 1970 uh, 1972 started to uh, to uh, absorb these uh, foreign uh, uh, investments as a debt, and then two years later, from 1974, the total budget deficit increased to 10 billion. Chinese yuan. That time, the uh, one dollar can against two point eight or two point no two point five seven. Uh, two point fifty seven means that hundred uh, no no uh, ten billion Chinese yuan can turn to four four billion or less than four billion means that okay. All of these are 44.3 billion as a project total amount turned to the, the budget deficit. So, and uh, that is, a, that is a, the cost. When we give this lecture, the title of the lecture, we said the cost. The cost is indicated by the budget, that is a deficit. When you have a very big deficit, at that time, it's almost 20% of the total budget income. The central budget income, the, de the deficit against the budget income, 20%. Means that you, are, you got to reduce your investments. Means that you absorb many foreign capital firm for, uh, facilities. But two years later, the third year, you have no ability to keep invest for take more uh, foreign capitals, foreign facilities. That means you need to have a kind of very difficult year. That is 1974 to 1975. That is the fourth cyclical crisis happened. So that is the cost. It's very obviously to see that from that this, this year, 1974, the investment downgrade, you can see it here. So here means that in the 1970s, when foreign capital turned to the central budget deficit, and then the central budget percentage decreased. Here, decreased to less than 20. It's just a 10%, or maybe 11%, maybe 12%. I mean, the central budget became more and more weak. It doesn't mean the local budget have a more increment. That's percentage. So means that central also lost the political power because you cannot give budget subsidies to local. So in 1970s, the mid 1970s, there are also some kind of political issues happening in China. I don't want to talk too much because this lecture is the exactly focus on the on the economic crisis. So that is one thing. Another thing that we should know here, when the second time West investments in China, the 1974, the investments from the governments decreased down to the zero. Look at here, down to the zero. And also the uh, uh, budget income less than zero, spendings. So that is a, what we talked about when you started to have the, the investments for changing your structure, 
you got to give more investments, and then the second year, the downgrade, and the third year, no, it's become minus. No investments, no new added employment. So from 1974, China re the jobless youth going to countryside. From this time, 1974, millions of young people from urban sent to the countryside. So we have uh, three times. The first time is here in 1960. There is uh, almost 12 million jobless youth from the urban area sent to the countryside. And then absorbed by people's commune. It's a collective system. And second time is here from 1967 to 68. That is cultural revolutionary period. And also because of the psychological crisis, there are 70 million educated youth, means a jobless youth, from urban sent to the countryside. So whole of my family sent to the countryside at that time. So last time lecture, I have uh, give you the story of, of my family. That's the second time. Here is the third time. Millions, not over than 10 million, but also millions. Young people have no job sent to the countryside. So we have a three times. This is the third time. And then, by you sent out your jobless youth to the countryside. And then the industrial capital can have a soft landing in urban because industrial capital mainly allocated in the urban. So from these three times, you can summarize. The crisis happened by urban industrial capital. Soft landing caused by your transfer out the cost of the economic crisis into the rural area. And then you can have a soft landing. By what? By state capitalism. So we can see that the major, uh, the, the, the main system from 1950s to 1970s, you can see that it's a state capitalism. We may in name of socialism, but because that state capitalism in Marxism is that one of the basic part of socialism depends on the political regime. If you set up the super political superstructure as a socialism, you can utilize your state capitalism as an economic infrastructure to back up the socialist political superstructure. So if you change your political superstructure to capitalism, Certainly, your economic infrastructure, the state capitalism, will be changed the essential. Okay, so when we talk about this this time, we said we do have three times sent to s s transfer out the state capitalist industrial crisis cost into the countryside. And then people tolerant, people send, the whole people stand such kind of transfer cost. Because they believe we are still in socialism. We still can have whole people ownership. No matter you lose or you gain, it's belong to whole people. So before that, I mean before 1980s, this uh, crisis, we all can have soft landing that's because of people still have a beliefs. That is a very important thing, uh, a key point we need to take into the consideration. So when we talk about the, the uh, 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 crisis, we need to know that it's uh, because of the 10 billion, more than 10 billion deficit, 
and uh, central budget have uh, no investments. There is uh, no new added uh, employment room. So then they have uh, to send the uh, youth from the urban to the countryside, and then they have a soft landing. But one thing also important, because cultural revolution has been ended since 1968 crisis. And there's a new crisis, it's a youth in urban have nothing to remobilize. So they have no passion of revolution. In 1968, at that time, these young people in urban area all have a strong passion to join the revolution. So they think that going to the countryside is continue their revolution. So they said, going to mountain, going to village, keep our revolution. To keep going the revolution, so they have a passion, more easier to mobilize. But in 1970s, when Mao last mobilized, the government mobilized the young people going to countryside, that became more and more difficult. And a lot of people wouldn't like to go. So the social uh, dissatisfied, instability, at that time, it's an underground, it's a potentially but will be happened until 1976. One Mao death. When Premier Zhou Enlai and Chairman Mao one by another death. So in 1976, there is a kind of political movement started. So I said I'm not analysis on the political issues. I just uh, talk about a little bit to give the reason from the cyclical economic crisis happened in 1974 and then turned to 1974, 1975, 1976, still keep sending these uh, young people from the urban to the countryside. So many dissatisfied motion now uh, 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 potentially in the urban society. So that is uh, one reason. Okay. And uh, when we talk about the this time's crisis, we need to pay attention to the institutional cost. What is that? Even you still want to maintain your economic sovereignty, you just partially to use the foreign facilities. But originally your system is that in 1960s, last lecture, I very much emphasized what is the independent industrial system in 1960s. When you replace the zero capital by concentrated labor to invest, you must give the labor class, this working class, this peasant class, high position. So they must join the management. So from 1960s, what is the principle of Anshan steel plant? That's the Angang Xian Fa. That is uh, the cadres of the factory, the technicians, and the workers. Three part mixed together to set up the management group. That is a drug means that you need to uh, keep the revolution and then push the production going forward. It's uh, two things together. But this uh, system cannot apply Western capital uh, uh, machines management. Western capital machinery system do need a very tech technical, very, very detailed management. Every step, even detailed steps, need to write into the, the textbook, into the manuals. And then you need to follow these manuals one step by another step. You don't need to have any creative. You have no any active uh, behavior. You need just uh, follow these uh, these uh, these uh, books. So we did have set up a kind of system that's a labor 
replace the capital. So last time I gave the, the final picture, the final page, to show that how to make labor-centered system. And then gave the explanation. But now when you have set up such kind of system, could hardly apply it to foreign invested capital, uh, foreign capital invested machinery system. So you need to have a new tran institutional transition. That is uh, started from the mid 1970s when you built up these uh, Western styles, Westernized factory. There is uh, somehow a lot of stories. When I give the, the picture to show that one, this one, and uh, also the, the first, this, this page. And I did have some, some meanings in the picture. They have the Germany facilities. But this Germany facility is standardized to have a, a fixed lens products. But when they use the Chinese workers and technicians to care about this machine, no. The products shot. Maybe 10 cm shot. They need uh, 170. As a, and then this product for, for, for working for the, for, the, for the car. And then you use this one to be a, a car cover. But just a 10 minutes, the, the 10 cm shot, they cannot use. And then very much involved of the whole of the car production. So if they use the Germany workers and Germany technicians, yes, they can have such kind of uh, 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 size. But if you're a Chinese one, no, they cannot. So that is a very interesting story that time reported by a lot of correspondents. And they said, okay, you need to change your system because your management is too much backward. We, our management is that we organize these uh, three part and then they discussed how can we use this machine and then we learn and then we step by step to change the machine, apply to our, our situation. But you cannot change these uh, foreign machines. So such kind of things to make China have the, 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 the institutional transition cost. So that is one thing. The second one is also the geopolitics. Think about China at that time. You not, not sign the, the commitment, but anyway, the negotiation. China have, do have the commitment. Retreat from the world revolution. Not export any uh, f fighting weapons. So and so. There's a much impact the geopolitical influence in Southeast Asia and South Asia in other areas. So since the late 1970s, then beginning of 1980s, China less influential in the world revolutionary ally. So originally Mao set up the third world structure that is a revolutionary theory, followed Marxism, Leninism. Mm -hmm. So Maoism at that time accepted by almost all the world revolutionary organizations as a Maoism. In, inside China is Mao thoughts, but out of China is a Maoism is because of it's a systematic revolutionary theory. Can not only not only can describe the world revolutionary situation, current situation, but also can be the guide, can be the thought to instruct the world revolution. But when China not retreat, but not obviously retreat, but reduce the influence, so the worldwide revolutionary ally became weakened and weakened. So and then China regained their influence in the world situation, that is a by economic power. Politically, 
there will be no grand narrative from China side if there is no Mao. There will be no discord. It means that you have a less ability to join the world discord competition. That is another uh, issue as the institutional cost. So macroly speaking, so if you put China into the, the world situation, the world structure, and then to talk about geopolitical competition, to talk about geo strategies, you found that this time, that is why I said this triangle, big triangle readjustment, there must be something as a gain, as a return you got. That is the return you got in, in China is a readjust the industrial structure, and then you have a lot of new products, and then you can satisfy the, the, the local needs, domestic demand increased, and then your economy step by step grows. That is a first China have a industrial growth. I said in the 1960s, you need to pay double price, double uh, cost for maintain. It's because of a tension relationship among China, you have a very heavy pressure, so you need to pay to move these coastal industries into the mountain area in, in Western China. That is a big cost. You pay it, and then you meet the serious economic crisis, and then you got to send your cultural revolutionary participants, that is at least uh, students in the schools, send them to countryside, and then end the cultural revolution. That is exactly Marxism, because infrastructure, infrastructure crisis very much impact the political issues. But nowadays also, you did have e economic returns, but you also have a political cost. That is also why we need to give more explanation to the social movements. Nowadays, a lot of third world social movements have no instruction. Maoism, where is that? Leninism, Marxism, or internationalism? What isms? What is new thought system can guide the third world social movement going forward? We need to re clarify. We need to re have self identification to make people have. The, the basic ability to do the analysis and then to have a new thought creative. So here's very important. That I, I have given the explanation of these two pictures. Now let's go to the, the outcome, to the, to the summary of this uh, lecture. We have uh, several points here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, originally in 1960s, China strongly maintain their sovereignty and then delinking with Soviet Union in the beginning of 1960. And then they emphasize the self-reliance and hard struggle. Join the world revolution to mobilize the low class as a class struggle. And the class struggle not exactly class struggle inside, but join the world uh, 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 revolution to fight the imperialism, colonialism, revisionism, that is enemy. So the almost all the low class, the labor in China, they do have the passion to join the world revolution. Whatever they do, they contribute. It's not for themselves, not selfish. So that, that time is very famous words from Mao is Dou Si Pi Xiu, means that if you trying to emphasize your selfish, means that you became revisionism. Understand me? So even you have some, some accident, our people just say, OK, do si pi xiu, and then they go back. They don't need to go to court. So many things in 1960s, it's because low class to be the ruling class. Working class, peasant class, they said, OK, you occupied the political superstructure. So all the factory managed, not only managed by the manager, but also must be joined by the working class, by the low levels, technicians, whatever. So that is the 1960s. You set up a revolutionary system, management system, all caused by the revolution, all 
caused by you have mobilized the low class. So by that, by the people's very much uh, 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 strong invest to replace the zero capital, China maintain the independent structure of the industries. No matter it's a sweat union style or Chinese style, but anyway, that means that to make Russianized heavy industrial, military industry re-embedded into Chinese society by you mobilize the whole people to join such kind of world revolution. That is 1960s, very special period. Means labor concentrated invest, replace the capital zero, zero capital. That is a typical revolutionary country's experience. But then late 1960s, threat by nuclear attack, nuclear weapon attack. Chinese Soviet Union military conflicts possibly to turn to the nuclear attack. So the beginning of 1970s, China utilized the strategic competition. America became weak. Soviet Union became strong. That is a historical opportunity can be utilized by Chinese. And then they got the Sino-US reapproach. That is historic opportunity. Opportunity for what? For absorb Western facilities and technicals to reform, to readjust Russianized heavy industry and the military industry, and then to tur turn this one, turn this industry to more better structure for satisfied domestic needs, domestic demand. That is the first time you use others' facilities to satisfy your own needs. So that is a, can be smart. And also they have a kind of policy, not FDI. This policy is quite different with others. I mean, small tigers or small dragons. Small tigers, small dragons only have a rootless investments. So it's not long-term development. So why China can be the second large of GDP and the first large industrial products country? It's because they maintain their heavy industry, machinery industry, and they have a much better structure of the industrial system, not only for overseas, but also for infrastructure construction. So that is, a, we said, started from the 1970s. It's because you still want to maintain your independence, economically and politically. It's quite different with tigers and small tigers and small dragons. So, but for that, any developing country got any foreign capital and the foreign technicals all have to turn to foreign debts. That is the regulation. Foreign investments turn to the foreign debts. That is the regulation. Mm -hmm. Depends on you have ability to pay back or not. So in 1966, Premier Zhou Enlai and the Vice Premier Li Xianlian has announced from 1966, we have no foreign debts. We all pay back. That means they pay back to Soviet Union. But beginning of 1970, they have a new debt. That is a Western country's debt. So they only have five years, no debt. So from 1971, 1972, or no, six years, 1972, the second time have foreign debts. And then these debts turn to the deficit. Deficit increment means that you have no ability to keep more investments, to move your economic growth again. So it means that you cannot stabilize to have a long-term growth. What's wrong? No power. Uh -huh. I will finish uh, no, 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 faster. No, 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 okay, no. So and then the further investment ability downgrade means that you have a no job room, no room for new job. So you got to send the 
young people to the countryside. But one Mao still be there, still be alive. The continue of revolution as the thought. People still have the passion. That is a low cost to use to make use going to the countryside. And then to make the state capital economic crisis half chance for soft landing. But that is the last one. By sent unemployment young people to countryside to solve your problem. And then finally we gave the difference of the East Asian four small dragon and the four small tigers, the model. I said here, as uh, my arguments, it may not apply to big continent country. It may be the experience of small economy, but it may not be applied to big continent country. Especially, you need to, to understand all of these are so-called small experience, small economics experience. It's rootless investments or rootless capital. It's more easier to take the revenue from the investments. And it's also more easier to seeking another revenue, institutional revenue, in other place. So they move, not stabilized. So nowadays, this a small economy, no matter it's Chinese Taiwan or Hong Kong or, or, or South Korea or Singapore, they don't need to, to, to criticize. Because they, their economic growth mainly come from this uh, rootless capital. And then this rootless capital move to other place. You don't need to complain others. It's because of you don't have your own model. You don't have your it, indeed, you don't set up any independent economic model for yourself. So that is my arguments when I, f when I go f going to finish my lecture. I said this one, later, this uh, ruthless capital invest into the coast of China to make coast of China have a 10 years growth. And then 10 years later, they need to take large amount of migrant labor from inland provinces, from Sichuan or Guizhou, even Gansu and Lisa provinces, it means that their local labor has been increased their price. So they got to need, they got to use Lisa migrants. That means the migrants laborers from Lisa inland provinces, they take the cost. So that is because of the, the coastal, yeah, coastal provinces, coastal area, the Lisa cardinals, they think that they make a big success, but indeed, means they take big revenue from inland China, and then transfer a lot of trouble to inland. And then inland China, these provinces, especially the rural area, became poor area. It doesn't mean success. Okay, so I hope that all the audience, when you hear about such kind of comparative, comparative experience study, you may have your own uh, thinkings. Thank you. I finished.